Ontario has more than 10,000 kilometers of Great Lakes shoreline, and that means an ever more expansive area of wetlands. Janice Gilbert is a wetlands ecologist. She's co-chair of the Ontario Phragmites Working Group, and she joins us now for 10 questions on the threats to wetlands around the Great Lakes and across the province of Ontario. Nice to have you here. Nice to be here. Question one, what are coastal wetlands? Coastal wetlands are this interface between the lake and the land where you'll get the variable water depths that um, are conducive for very specific plants to be growing there. And um, there's a, a very, depending upon how the water fluctuates, you can get a really high diversity of vegetation growing, different uh, vegetation community types. And within that mosaic, you get uh, w water, waterfowl, wildlife that are dependent on those um, specific uh, habitat types for all or a portion of their, their, uh, their life cycle. Question two, why are they important? They're important because uh, they are a very unique ecosystem in the sense that uh, they provide the conditions where only certain species of plants and animals can live and survive. Hmm. Just because of where they're located on the Great Lakes and, and how uh, they're adapted to that fluctuating uh, water level. Question three, what makes Ontario's wetlands unique? Ontario's wetlands are unique because many of them uh, do not have dikes or uh, altered hydrology, so they operate under that natural hydrological regime, which, which keeps them really diverse hmm. uh, systems. Uh, a lot of the, the wetlands on the American side have been diked and controlled. The water levels are controlled, which have, have their benefits, but uh, we're fortunate that we have many that aren't. And the other neat thing about uh, the wetlands on Ontario's shoreline is some of them are in the Carolinian zone. And that makes them unique globally, actually, as well. Carolinian They're, zone being? The Carolinian zone, that's that, that zone in Ontario where uh, we have species from the states, from the southern um, climes that can survive oh, because okay. we have milder temperatures, milder winters. Gotcha. Question four, what are the threats facing these wetlands? Oh, well, we've already lost estimates uh, going back um, a couple of decades, at least 80, if not 90 percent, just due to human Interven uh, intervention actions, marinas, agriculture, infilling, uh, alterations on the landscape. So those remaining wetlands that are there are under threat, again, from human activity. So we're bringing in uh, species that aren't native that are threatening them. One in particular, which I think is the single greatest threat right now to our coastal wetlands is Phragmites australis, this invasive grass. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are many other threats. Um, uh, they're systematically being um, marginalized. There's development going on around them, and some are still being developed into golf courses or cottage lots. Well, let me mention another one. Question five, ATVs. ATVs. What kind of damage are they doing? Oh, tremendous amount. And I'd like to think that the folks that are doing this just don't understand these unique ecosystems that they're roaring around and, and making their own personal playground. Very rare species are being impacted, run over, uh, rare turtles, rare plants. Hmm. And when the lake levels drop, I see a lot of ATV activity on our shorelines and areas that are really sensitive and they really shouldn't be there. Question six, how do you mitigate the damage? For ATVs, uh, I've actually seen a sign that says sensitive coastal habitat, no ATV, and there's the well-worn track right beside. So hmm. I'd like to think that public education really helps. I think for most people it will. For a, a, a very small minority, I've heard this many times, it's their right to do what they want to do in their backyard. Um, and um, their, their right to have enjoyment uh, absorbs the right for wildlife to be there or rare plants to be there. So I don't know how we get around mitigating that kind of activity. Maybe we just have to hit them hard with heavy fines. But a lot of these systems, I, I call them orphaned. They're they're protected under our, our provincial uh, laws. Um, you can't develop in them, but no one's really looking after them. Hmm. And so um, that's in many ways why Phragmites is allowed to establish, because no one's really paying attention. Gotcha. Question seven. How does development have an impact on the wetlands? It has a really large impact, and I'm seeing this more as we go into cottage country, because there's more pressure for folks to have their own little piece of, of uh, 
paradise up there. And, and so there's pressure for the tax base as well for municipalities. Mm -hmm. And they see uh, what they think is a wealth of the, the wetlands and, and we really shouldn't have to worry about looking after them. But we really do because there's a finite number and there's more and more people that want to be in, in these areas and recreate. And it's, it's, a big, it's a big stressor for these systems. I mentioned that a golf course we have lots of golf courses in Ontario. I don't know why we have to fill in a, a coastal wetland for a golf course. Mm. Question eight, are wetlands not protected by law? They are. They're protected by law, but again, we have these activities going on. And uh, smaller wetlands as well are disappearing. If you go up into North Bruce, um, beautiful little fens, and I'll see uh, for sale sign realtors for folks that want to sell them for cottage lots. Mm. Those aren't really protected. So um, we have uh, really neat ecosystems on our lakes that are disappearing or being neglected or um, being misused. And then they're threatened by invasives like Phragmites. Mm. So they're under threat. Question nine, more regulation. Would that protect wetlands better? I think we need to enforce the regulations that are there. So I think that we need to have more eyes on the ground that are watching these areas and reporting and that there, there's actions that are taken. Uh, that's what I think we need. Let's finish up on question 10. Anybody watching this right now, what's one thing they could do to better protect wetlands? Well, if you have one, um, maybe you could consider donating it to Nature Conservancy Canada or another organization that will protect it in longevity instead of selling it for profit for another cottage lot. Um, if it's in your municipality, maybe you could um, um, go to your municipal council and say these are our value to us and we want to protect what's left and can we not have a, can we have a moratorium on not allowing development on these areas. Um, the public has a, a large voice, they just don't know it. If you go to your MP or MPP, they, they listen. That's Janice Gilbert from the Ontario Phragmites Working Group. Janice, good to have you here at TVO. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.